Welcome to another message from Citizen Heights. We are located in the nation's capital, where our heart is to inspire hope, remove limitations, and help you experience God's possible for your life. Join Pastors Michael and Heather Giroux in their passion to help you live your best life. We hope you enjoy today's encouraging and uplifting message. Before we go any, any further, let's celebrate what God did last weekend, shall we? Resurrection Sunday, we love Easter, we packed out both campuses, amazing uh, new faces, new friends, kids and families, all the uh, Easter egg hunts, so thank you for our incredible children's ministry, Don't, let's give it up for them, they work so hard every week, and uh, put on such a great Easter egg hunt here, and, and gifts, and uh, gift bags over our Tenley Town campus. And let's celebrate 1,649 people hearing the gospel, going through the survey card, checking A, B, C, or D. And uh, thank you for being part of that survey. We're going to start a new series today called Follow and uh, talk about what it means to follow Jesus. Now, we designed this series for all people. No matter what box you checked last week, this will help you say, I need help. This will help you, and uh, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. So grab your Bibles. If you like to use your phone, uh, we have the Bible app built into our Citizen Heights app, so you can look at your church notes on your app and flip back and forth to the, to the reference. But Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, it's going to be an anchor scripture for the next few weeks, so, uh, so you might want to bookmark it. But let's, let's go ahead and read it. We'll put this up on the screen so you can see. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Amen? Amen. Well, we're, we're, we're talking today specifically, if you like titles, let me give you a title. It's Developing a Faith That Follows. Simple as that. Developing a Faith That Follows. Sometimes we have faith in things that we can't follow, we can't trust, we can't really put, uh, you know, weight or, or lean into. But when we come to, uh, when we t- come to talking about Jesus, that's a faith that we can lean into. And that's a faith that we can follow, but it, it, takes, it takes time to learn how to follow. And so I'm going to need help on this, a little bit of help. Um, I'll, I'll, so I'm going to introduce you to my pal, my buddy, my friend. He's going to help me illustrate some of this and get us rolling today. So without any further delay, I want to welcome the Capital Cut Points, Whiskey in the Wild. <laughs> here he is. This is uh, Whiskey. Whiskey, here. And uh, we just call him Whiskey. That's his call name. And uh, yeah, he'll he'll sniff he'll sniff just about anything. Beware. And uh, Whiskey is here today just to help me uh, illustrate a few things. Now, first thing, Whiskey here, right here. Wait, wait, hey, 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 wait, right here. Stay right there. So when we first got Whiskey, uh, he was a puppy. And when we first got Whiskey, uh, he would chew on things, everything. Uh, he was not house trained. Uh, he did not know any commands. He ran around like a maniac. Uh, but we, we started training him. We started working with him and uh, even got some professional training involved as well. And he learned a few things. Uh, he learned a few commands like he just saw himself on the screen. And he's really interested in who is that good looking dog over there? Is that a girl dog? No, that's you, my friend. And uh, that is funny. Check that out. Now, it, he could win Westminster, I, for, for sure, this guy. He's so, but Whiskey, Whiskey, hey, bud, Kennel. And so he, he learned a few things. Like, that's one command he learned, Kennel, and, and he goes and he, and he hangs out. He knows how to sit, and he knows how to do quite a few commands because he hunts with me, so he knows a lot of field commands. And, uh, but w- let me show you two of my favorite commands that Whiskey knows. Uh, these are two of my favorite. So I'm, I'm, are you ready for them? I don't want to lose the camera on this. So uh, this is the first one. Whiskey here. Whiskey here. So that's pretty. No, no. Hey, 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 hey. Whiskey here. Here. Right here. 
So that's one of my favorites. What that means is he comes when I call. I like that. Whiskey, where are you? Here. Now, this is my second favorite one. Hey, whiskey, right here. Heel. This is my second favorite one. He, he comes when I call. Whiskey, heel. He comes when I call, but he also goes where I lead. I like that he comes when I call. Some of you have pets, and you're just furious right now. You're like, what? This is possible? Hey, whiskey. Go ahead, kennel. He comes when I call, and he goes where I lead. And that, my friends, it, I guess a simple way to say it is he follows. He follows. And, and when we're talking about following, um, and he'll hang out there. He'll be, he'll be good for a while, I think. Um, but I know, I know that we're a clever bunch. So some of you are already ahead of me going right now, maybe possibly even feeling a little insulted, like, wait a minute. <laughs> Is he comparing my willingness to follow God uh, with a dog's obedience? Like, am I being compared to a dog right now? And if you're insulted by this, I'm sorry, that's not my intention. But the Bible, it, it's actually worse. We're <laughs> Because dogs are smart, loyal, hardworking, emotionally in tune creatures. And that would be a compliment to be compared to a dog. But that is not what the Bible compares us to. The Bible compares us when discussing our topic today, when discussing the topic of following, the Bible compares us, actually compares us to sheep. And sheep is a downgrade <laughs> from dog. Uh, it's worse, right? Because sheep are weak. Um, they're not that bright, they're awkward, they're physically unstable, they make questionable decisions and get themselves in complications and problems over and over again. We've all seen the meme of the guy pulling the sheep out of the crevice, and the second he gets out, the, sh the sheep takes two bounds and leaps directly back into the same crevice. And you go, that's about right, that's, that's about a good comparison. Um, so if we could humble ourselves a little bit today and say, okay, if God... If, if sheep is the analogy, then I have to be humble enough to know I've gotten myself into some problems before. I've wandered into some strange pastures. I've gotten into some dangerous situations. And Jesus said in John 10, he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Isn't that a wonderful thing that God wants to know us? And I can tell you, I've spent a long time, hey, hey. I've spent a long time uh, with whiskey. He knows my voice. And uh, I used to have to have an e-collar on him where I could vibrate when he's far away, and it's like a haptic tick just to let him know. It's like you're tapping him on the shoulder. I don't even need that anymore. I, I will walk around downtown uh, Bethesda. I'll hop out, and he just, boop, locks in. Uh, he was a little distracted this morning because of all the smells and, and fun faces in the room. But he'll just walk right with me because he knows my voice and he knows it's safe with him. And usually there's some treats with him. And usually there's some, some, some walks in the woods and some good times with him. And so he's learned. And so when the Bible says that, we c that, that as sheep we can know his voice and follow God. Too many of us have settled for a faith that only follows in the good times, only follows when it's convenient only follows if it's where we want to go right and God says come on I want to I want to lead you somewhere and he starts taking you're like whoa wait a minute can I have coordinates please we, we let me know if this is something I'm I, I'm into it where is God taking me but I want to look at Matthew the gospel of Matthew chapter 4 and talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus okay so this is six weeks we're going to get week number one today and some of us, it's our first step in our relationship with Jesus. And so you're taking your first step. This is going to be great for you. And for others, maybe it's been a while. And to be honest, you just need some realignment. Because I'll tell you the truth. In the front row here, we have the lovely Kelly Pressy, who is uh, one of our dog watchers. So when I go out of town, Whiskey will hang out with Kelly and, and her dogs. And... Uh, well, her, her old dog, and I don't think he's hung out with your new dog. But w th there's something interesting. When I pick Whiskey up from being at Kelly's house for a week, Whiskey is a bad boy. And it's because Kelly is an enabler. 
<laughs> she does not hold him to the line, and he starts to get slack. And sometimes we get out of alignment, you know, and, and then all of a sudden you come back into a place and go, I'm out of alignment. No wonder I'm wandering into trouble. No m wonder my heart and my soul and my spirit feel disrupted and unsettled. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's for the new person, but it's for the person out of alignment, too. It's like going to a marriage conference, right? All the newlyweds are like, I've never heard this before. This is amazing. And all the oldieweds are like, we heard this, and we stopped doing it. We got to get back in on track. And so uh, we all need to follow Jesus. Amen? So Matthew 4, let's read it together, verse 18 through 22. And uh, let's, let's take a couple lessons out of this. From verse 18, it says, One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, <clears throat> Come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. Verse 21, A little farther up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee repairing their nets and he called to them too they immediately followed him leaving the boat and their father behind now here's the first thing i want you to write down and we're gonna we're gonna hit, try to hit three of these but becoming a follower of jesus remember developing a faith that follows doesn't happen accidentally all right it happens because we we take a couple intentional steps and we ask the holy spirit to really empower us to to do it so uh, just if, if you like to write things down, becoming a follower of Jesus. First thing we see here in this passage, number one, learn to listen to Jesus. Learn to listen to Jesus. It says in Matthew 4, verse 19, Jesus called out to them. A and believe me, believe me when I say God is calling to your heart. God is drawing on your heart. Revelation 4 says, Behold, he stands at the door of your heart, and he knocks. Some of you have ring doorbells, and somebody will ring your doorbell, and you'll get a notice on your phone like, Oh, somebody's at my house right now. Right? And it's, a, it's, a, it's real because you can see it. Can I tell you, as real as you can see that is as real as God's knocking, God's calling, God's speaking, and, and longing to commune with you. And so learning to listen to Jesus, it says Jesus called out to them, verse 19, and they left their nets at once and followed him. They listened, and at once they followed him. Say it with me. They listened, and at once they followed him. I know on its face that might not sound that amazing. But consider, they left nets, they left boats. They left family members. We're talking assets. We're talking relationships. We're talking about professions. And, and it says at once they left. Now that is probably the most amazing thing. The at once. The immediacy. Does that sound amazing to you? Let, let me ask you this way. Do any of you have kids? Anybody have friends? Spouse? Coworkers? A pet? Does anything in your life do what you say at once? Hardly ever, right? Stop and at once followed what you say. It's, it's rare, isn't it? And here they are, Jesus, we, we, we don't contextualize this. We just spiritualize it and we go, oh yeah, James and John and Peter, oh yeah, they became disciples, they followed. This is their introduction to Jesus. Hello. He calls them, and they listen immediately. Like, if you ran into somebody at Home Depot or Chick-fil-A or on the job, and they had that kind of, there was something about Jesus, and there was a response in the disciples. So if you're a follower of Jesus, he's whining a lot. Does he want to go to you? Call him. <laughs> he knows my voice, not your voice. <laughs> I don't know. Is he, is he okay? Just sit down. Hey, just relax. 
we'll see if that does it. He's making a, what we call a leaking tire noise. It's just like this, con there it is, constant little. Uh, but but what we're talking about now is that that immediacy. Uh, listening to Jesus because we're distracted people living in a distracted world and we get distracted uh, noises will distract us you know things going on around us will distract us you have to honk the uh, honk the horn at the light because the person in front of you doesn't know it's green because they're scrolling right you go to the restaurant no one's talking because they're you know on the phone and unlike any other time in history if someone skins their knee on the other side of the planet, the cult of compassion is, is demanding we, we feel every pain and, and take it on and carry the weight of it. For previous generations, it was a, it was a prayer closet for a general um, notion of need, right? Previous generations, they'd be, Lord, help them in, in this country, and Lord, help help. Help the gospel go forth over here. And Lord, help this situation. It was just a, it was a prayer for a general notion of need. And now we get the need in full color. 4K. 24 hours a day. And it's, whoa, overwhelming. Like there's so much going on. We're taking in so much. that there, There's so much noise. Maybe we've been listening to too many voices. Maybe we've been allowing too many pulls on our soul that subtract from us and are not answering the call of the voice of the one who will actually add and multiply strength to us. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, hear me. Hear my call, know my voice. We have to learn to follow Jesus. And the first step is becoming a better listener, right? Every marriage knows, like, the key to a great marriage is great communication. And despite knowing that the key to every great marriage is great communication, the key to every marriage still is getting better at communicating. It's the same thing with companies. The key to great corporations and culture and, co and companies is great communication. Everybody knows it. Knowing it isn't the problem. It's the illusion that you've had great communication, right? Because oftentimes when people are listening to us or, or when people are talking to us, we're loading up what to respond to and we've tuned out even what they're saying. And so it's easy to see how we could be distracted. We, you know, becoming a better listener when it comes to the voice of Jesus. And when you're talking about hearing God, uh, next week be sure to come back because next week I'm going to be talking about the Bible. And uh, for some of us, the Bible is a storybook or it's allegories or, or ancient literature. But the Bible is God speaking to you. And uh, so if you want to hear and say, I want to be better at listening to Jesus, get better at the Bible, and we're going to be hitting that next week. Um, so listening to Jesus. Everyone say, listen to Jesus. All right, the second one we see here is learn to let Jesus lead. We've got to learn to listen to Jesus, but we number two, we have to learn to let Jesus lead. And Matthew 4 says, come, follow me. I will show you how to fish for people. Follow me, he says. That he says, don't follow your opinions or your ideas or your, your feelings or your preferences. He says, follow me. Right? A and we follow Jesus wherever he leads. And he says to his disciples, he says, follow me and I will make you something. I will make you fishers of men. So understand, they're natural fishermen. So he takes their natural vernacular, their natural language, their natural gifting and he realigns it to give it eternal impact. He says, I know you fish for fish, but if you follow me, I'll make you a fisher, a, a fisher of men. He says, you're giving your lives to catch fish. Great, noble profession. Nothing wrong with it. But beyond your chosen, listen to me, beyond your chosen profession, God has for you an eternal mission. Listen to what I'm saying. Beyond your chosen profession, God has for you an eternal mission. So if you're a doctor, be a great doctor. Chosen profession, God will use you in the midst of that practice. And, and, and he's the great physician. You just be a really good physician. Right? That's your chosen profession. But beyond that, there's eternal mission wrapped in that. There's eternal mission. 
at our church, uh, we, we believe that God's given you an eternal mission. He's given you, uh, you know, something eternal uh, within your purpose. And in fact, the church class that I'm going to teach today here at the, our Dulles campus, we're offering it at our Tenley Town campus as well. Uh, we talk about finding your purpose. We talk about, uh, we're, n- we're not trying to get you to quit your job because your job is part of what God has, has made you and gifted you and aligned you. But we're trying to awaken inside you that there's an eternal mission, there's an eternal purpose that holds hands with the temporary profession that God's given you. Because we believe you're not going to be truly fulfilled in life until you're following God's purpose for your life. You're just not, you're, you're not going to be fulfilled in life there's only so many vacations, there's only so many cars, there's only so many promotions, right? There's only, only so many things and stuff that you can uh, try to attain before you realize. And once, once you realize it, it's not enough, it just doesn't fulfill, I, I want something more. What is the more? What you want is Jesus, and, and what he leads you into is the fulfillment of eternal purpose. And, and that's a that's a, a powerful thing uh, to find your eternal purpose and and to be a part of that. And so th- the disciples became disciples because they listened to his voice and then they followed where he led into eternal purpose. And then finally, number three, Jesus, uh, excuse me, the, Jesus, when he called the disciples, here's the third key for us. Learn to leave things that keep you from Jesus. Learn to leave things that keep you from Jesus. Like just learning to let go. Learning to leave it behind. As we already noted, they left behind relationships, assets, profession, security, stability. They left those things behind because Jesus said, follow me. And follow me many times means there's you have to take inventory. What goes with me? Not everything can keep me because I've heard Jesus. He has a purpose for me. And so in my response to him, not everything can come with me. Some things have to let go. Then uh, Matthew 16, 24, let me check on my guy. Oh, yeah, he's real interested in saying hello. Hey, can you take him to the side room there? Thanks. Let's hear it for whiskey in the wild. Okay, okay, okay. Whiskey in the wild. Next week, I will bring Jaeger, and Jaeger is a wild card. (laughs) Jaeger is going to get crazy. It's German for hunter. He's a German short-haired pointer, and uh, he's crazy. And he's a puppy, and it's going to get wild next week. Uh, but I want to I want to establish this, this last point without distraction. Matthew 16 verse 24. Learn to leave things that keep you from Jesus. It says then Jesus said to his disciples, "If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. If any of you wants to be a follower of Jesus, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me." Learning to leave things. Learning to let go. Following Jesus, I I know this is not going to be especially popular to the American public and the American church, but following Jesus is an act of submission. It's consciously saying, you're king, you're the king. You're the king of kings. And I want to be part of that kingdom. And kingdoms don't run on consensus. Kingdoms don't run on on boardrooms and, and, and multiple voices. Kingdoms run, and this is the kingdom, the Bible says, that will never end. It's an everlasting kingdom. It's a kingdom that grows and grows and grows. But when you release things that, we're, that you're holding on to, when you let go of those things, it's the lordship of Jesus in your life who says, don't eat that right? Like, if you're a shepherd and you've got your sheep and you come in and don't eat that. Well, they don't have the for, the forethought or the experience or the capacity to know whatever they're eating in that moment is going to bring them harm. But the shepherd knows. So he pulls them away to green pastures. 
See, the king, we it's amazing because you won't find it in any other uh, 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 claim in any other religion that we serve the king of kings on high, the eternal throne. Yet he calls himself the shepherd. Lowly. One of the most lowly occupations you could ever hold in Bible times. And he's the good shepherd. He says, the crook of my, of my staff, and I'm bringing you close to myself, and I'm bringing you to safe passage, and I'm bringing you to still waters, and, and I'm ready to fight when we're in, that, in the place of the enemy. And those, those uh, adversaries are coming against you, and you've got predators coming in. But the sheep know his voice, and they know as long as we're with him, we're going to be safe. The Lordship of Jesus. This is where we get stuck. It's tough. It means I have to give up my own way. God, you don't understand. I like my own way. <laughs> right? I'm doing it my way because I like it. And I think it's a good way. You ever have someone come up to you and unsolicited says, hey, can I show you how to do that? And you're like, no. You cannot show me how to do this. I'm doing it the way I'm doing it because I like it. And you say, well, I could show you this is a conversation that happens in my house quite a bit. There's a better way. There's a right way. No, that's okay. No thanks. I like my way. Thanks, but no thanks, Jesus. I'm good with my way. Thanks, but no thanks, Jesus. I'm, I don't really want to know if there's a right way or a different way or a better way. I, I appreciate the fact that you went out of your way to tell me how to, how to do relationships and how to reconcile when there's offense and how to worship and how to hear your voice and how to deal with money and how to serve and I, I appreciate that you went through all that trouble but no thanks if you're not letting go you're not following like to follow means you're going to let go of some things some of it's destructive habits that are easy to identify you're going to go oh yeah that's an addiction and it's really been difficult well Get a community of people around you that will pray and believe and stand with you. Get practical, professional help that will hold your hand at the same time. And then get the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that we sang about earlier. And watch you, it's like rocket thrusters, like rip through that thing that held your you and your dad and your grandfather. But it's time to let go. It's time to get free. It's time to get to a place where you're hearing God, listening to Him. You're, you're able to, to hear his voice. You're letting him lead, but you're also letting go. It says you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow it. it like even that scripture, you must give up your own way. Must. Jesus isn't very good at giving suggestions. He says you must. I love that. Jesus says you must. He doesn't do suggestions, right? He doesn't build consensus. He's a king, and he's a good shepherd, and he knows how to get you to safety and to passage. Take up your cross and follow me. And here's something I found. You can't, you can't carry your, your past and your cross at the same time. You can't carry your pain and your cross at the same time. You can't carry your, all your opinions and, and, and unbiblical worldviews and your cross at the same time. Like at some point, it's like when you see a little kid and they come up and they've got that thing in their hand. You're like, give me that and I'll give you this. And they're like, no, <laughs> no, I want both in my hand. And you say, well, you've got to release something for an empty hand to be able to receive what God has for you next. I just wanted to ask you today as we conclude. What are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? And, and what are you holding on to that's holding you back from Jesus? Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. Even now, just, just begin to, to, to speak to you in such a way that's very personal. And you go, oh, it's that thing. Oh, it's that way of thinking. Oh, it's that line item. It's, it's that thing that's taking all this time. 
and all this energy and all this emotion. And the Holy Spirit is very good at making this laser-like, like a scalpel. The Bible says that, that the Word of God is active and it's alive and it cuts between uh, the issues of your life. And so we're just going to believe right now. And in fact, I'm going to invite the musicians to come as we get ready to close. And, and I want to get really practical. You're finding out, you're figuring out right now, just saying, God, what is the thing I need to let go of? God, how can I let you lead? God, have I been listening? It's tough to, you know, I, I meet with people sometimes. They say, I, I don't hear God's voice anymore. I just, I can't hear God or I don't know. God's not speaking to me. And I ask, well, when are you being quiet to hear? Are you reading the Bible? Because that's how he speaks probably 90% of the time. And then the other 10% will be him highlighting something he said or using something that somebody else said. Or that inner witness, that still small voice inside you. And so are you leaving time in your week? Are you making time in your week to hear the voice of God? So as the musicians are coming up and getting ready, let's get really practical. Uh, what do I do? What are my next steps to follow Jesus? Let me, let me just give you some quick ones. The first one, join us for the next five weeks. We're, we're going to look at what it means, learn, learning to follow Jesus. Join us for the next five weeks. I told you last week, everybody needs a pastor, and I'm volunteering. I've got openings, and I'm, I'm, I'm applying for the role right now. That you would have someone in your life that loves you, loves you enough to encourage you, call out the gifts and talents that you have, the treasures in your life, but at the same time, challenge you and say, come on, there's more for you than this. Join us for the next five weeks and learn what it means. The second thing is, I, I'd say get water baptized. If you've never been water baptized, we're having water baptisms on April 21st. That's just two weeks. So if you've recommitted to Jesus or, recomm or, or committed to Jesus recently, the, the Bible tells us repent, believe, get baptized. And uh, what you're actually doing is following in the footsteps in the example of Jesus. So following Jesus, get water baptized April 21st. Uh, the, the third thing is, I'd say join a citizen group. We're going to break here in a moment. The prayer team will be down front to pray for people. But for everybody else uh, in the lobby and, and at Citizen Hall, you can find a citizen group. Growth happens in the context of relationships. We want you growing in God. And that happens when you make some friends who are traveling in the same direction as you. And finally, the fourth thing is, is go to the church class today. It's happening right after our citizen group Sunday. It's about 45-minute class. It tells you who we are as a church, where we came from, and where we're going, and how you can be a part. Why? Because church is God's idea. The Bible says it's his bride, and it's, it's, it's the conduit by which he moves and works. And so we'd love for you to be part of the church class, uh, help you find your purpose, figure out why you're created, all those great things. Those are just four practical, easy things. We don't have to make it mystical, do we? We just say, what am I doing to follow Jesus? The disciples literally, they didn't just go spiritually like, oh, yes, that would be wonderful. Jesus, yes, I'll follow you in a very cerebral, metaphorical way. I'll follow you in a very abstract way that requires no proof, evidence, or action on my part. I mean, kind of sounds like church life sometimes. But what did they do? They learned to let go of some things. And they said, there's an eternal purpose, and there's a relationship. I want to know the voice of the shepherd. Amen? Can I pray with you? That's far enough. Well, if, you're, if you're listening today, maybe you realized, you know, I need the faith that follows. I need God in my life. And maybe you've never made that decision. Just close your eyes right here in the room, online campus, over our 10 Lake Town campus. Just eyes closed, no moving around. And let's just give a moment. If you're here today and you realize, I need this faith. I need to make a decision to follow Jesus. Maybe you've never done it before. And upon hearing about this good shepherd who's also king, you come to the decision that I need God in my life. We want to pray for you right here in a moment. I'm going to pray a general prayer to, to move us on and, and transition here in a moment. But just taking a moment right now. You need Jesus in your life. You, need to, you want to hear his voice. You want to follow him. I'm going to count to three. When I hit three, I'm going to invite you to lift your hand. And by lifting your hand, you're, you're not joining a church. You're not saying you have it all figured out. You're just saying, I need Jesus in my life. might be the first time you've ever done it. 
It might be a moment where you're just recommitting and saying, I got I, I got to get back. I got to realign. It's as easy today, just lifting your hand and saying, I need Jesus. I already one, don't wait. Today is the day. Two, I'm not going to call you out of your seat or call any attention to you. I'm just going to pray a general prayer over us as we conclude. I already one, two, three hands in the air. Say, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else say, yeah, include me in that prayer. All over at the Tenley Town campus, up into the balcony, on the online campus, wherever you're listening, maybe on podcasts, you know that the Good Shepherd is calling your voice. You're calling your name. And you're hearing his voice. And you're saying, Jesus, I need you. Praise God. You can put your hands down. Maybe you didn't feel comfortable lifting your hand, but you know this is for you. You're going to pray this prayer with us nice and loud all together. Dear Jesus, I give you my life because you first gave me yours. I love you, Jesus, because you first loved me. So I give you all that I am, all that I used to be, all that I hope to be. I'm learning to let go, and I'm learning to listen to you. Now say this boldly. I am a Christian. By God's grace, I'm saved. Today's a new day. Today's a fresh start. It's his mercy, and it's his grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we celebrate with those who just prayed that prayer?